another sketch stretch. In this series, we're drawing 3D objects that we love. I love my UE boom. We're gonna draw a speaker, a cylinder basically. Find something that's kind of in this shape. Get your materials ready. Get ready to warm up by drawing some cylinders. Everything in our life is kind of like a cylinder. This, this, and the key to that, to drawing this, this yogurt, is practicing ellipses. So I'll take you through a warm up where we go ahead and we practice making things look 3D, drawing spheres with these ellipses and these different strokes. And we'll go ahead and we'll do that as a spicy warm up, spicy warm up. We'll do swells, we'll do it all. Don't worry, there is a slower version of this video after. Then I am gonna go ahead and model drawing the speaker with having an ellipse on the top and the bottom. It should be the same curve. And then I'll go ahead, I'll talk about different line directions as we slowly work in color and value. I will explain my choices, check it out. And we'll talk about how layering with marker is a great way to approach drawing, right? And just slowly adding in values. I'll talk about how you really need to define the edges and shade the background and really show where something, uh, where the object begins and ends. We'll add in mid-tones. We'll do an underpainting with light grays. We keep going and then we look in the dark values and we will bring down that background. So, and I'll talk about, okay, we got a black area, we got a white area. Now let's keep adding those mid-tones. Let's keep painting on top finding the different values of the different colors in your marker bag or whatever materials you're using. Color has value, color has lights and darks. And we'll keep painting. I'll talk about adding texture to your object. Different shading techniques will give you different kind of texture, whether it's dots or hatching or lines. And we'll keep rocking and rolling. I will try to sell pen to you and how you should draw with pen. It really helps to define the edges and makes it feel rough and bumpy. Right, so it's almost like I could feel my speaker. Um, in this series, we talk about things that are important to us and we draw them. And we find beauty in simple things that bring us joy, spark joy, spark joy, spark joy. Adding in a dark shadow, adding in more texture with the marker, with the pen, adding more middle values. And I'm watching the dog, the dog is looking at me. I have a dog, by the way. Okay, guys, and then I'll talk about the value of adding in light pen and really smooth, simplifying your drawing, and here we hey, go. Hey, guys, so here we go. Um, before you start drawing anything, I'm telling you, you're gonna warm up. Easy points, easy way to be more confident. Make sure you have your pencils nearby. Make sure you sharpen them. Oh my gosh, that is something to do. Make sure you have snacks like Tapatio and make sure you have something that you love to draw. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the importance of drawing cylinders. Why draw cylinders? Well, this is my Yui Boom. And in this video series, we talk about beautiful things that bring us joy, that are part of our identity. Like this is part of me. I know it's silly and I will talk during this. Uh, I have a blue gray marker. Uh, I have a bunch of different markers. But in this series, I talk about how to draw basic things and to make them beautiful and practice our drawing skill and improve our love of drawing. And I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, drawing can be messy and I know people like it to be neat and perfect but it needs to be messy in order for it to get to the perfect thing. Cause guess what, everyone, life is messy. So, and we need to warm up, we need to stretch. So make a page in your journal, drawing cylinders and ellipses. Cause again, everything comes back to the ellipse when we're drawing things that are 3D. Oh my gosh, I got a piece of hair here. Um, my students say it's entertaining when I do accents. So why, what is an ellipse? An ellipse is a circle, people. It's a circle, it, it, well not a circle, it's like an oval. And when you draw, you wanna do, I learned this through figure drawing. I took a lot of figure drawing in college, that's where you draw paper. But really this stroke, hush, 
this curve, it really helps you to like be a little bit more free with drawing a contour line, which is drawing the inside of an object because line creates form. And in order to make something look 3D, you're gonna wanna be able to do this stroke because there are curvy lines all around this. See, look, like these, all these little strokes, all these little dots, they make a line. Okay, same thing with my coffee cup, which I'm gonna draw in a different video. Look, you got an ellipse going right around the coffee cup. So go dark to light, dark to light, and then you wanna have a lighter line weight at the top. It basically, like you want it to disappear, the line. And keep doing this motion. I know you're like, why? Why do I need to do that? Because that's going, it's, it's like motion memory. You know, like if someone gets in your face, you're like, out! But it, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm drawing something 3D, out! what? Like, like curvy, curvy, curvy. And you're like, oh, it's round. Okay, I hear my children, I'm current. Okay, okay. Just so you know, I'm a mom and uh, my students know this and I get interrupted all the time. If you know me, you probably know I'm a mom. Okay, I gotta talk about the drawing. I'm doing cross hatching, do that. Okay, pause your video. Basically, try to draw a sphere as a warm up with these curvy lines. Again, just keep practicing this. Okay, there's really no such thing as too much practice. And if you do a bunch of these curves on top of each, now that is what not to do. That is what I see my students doing. That is okay, right? What you wanna do is you wanna have crisper lines that have a different line weight. My kids like everything's dark. But what you wanna do is you wanna go dark to light with your line, and then when you're making this circle, the ellipses on the back, it gets lighter. You see how fluffy it is? Fluffy like a French pudding or something I don't bake, who am I kidding? So dark to light, dark to light. How is everyone doing out there? You can also use ellipses to make uh, spheres because you make them up and get smaller. They get a little bit smaller. Ellipses could go in different directions. And look, I'm going dark to light. You can even like make them into a tornado, really, and make a 3D tornado. There are all sorts of things you could do and make once you've mastered the stroke of the ellipses. So I'm telling you, to my students, there's no such thing as too much line. Make sure your line's going in different directions. Different directions, we wanna practice that exercise all of the time. Make sure you, there's no such thing as warming up. You post warm ups like this, it's gonna make your Seesaw portfolio go up. And to the rest of the world, if you're watching, that's crazy. You're not in my class and you're watching, but that's cool. Go ahead and warm up, okay? You have your pages of just a line and mess in your journal. In college, we would use this thing called newsprint and we would just be like, whoosh, 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 right? And we would move our shoulders, but I don't know, like if we have newsprint or space these days. Just so you know, I'm using an H pencil right now. Um, like that's a hard lead, this is a three H, but most of the time my students just use a number two Blick pencil and that works fine too, because you could get different values, different lights and darks, H. Um, and yeah, so, Hatching and cross hatching could be curvy. That's a misconception. So what I'm doing right there is I am using the cross hatching to go ahead and make a curvy sphere. What are we doing and why is this taking so long? Well, guys, we're warming up. I know we haven't drawn the beloved UE boom yet and you're like, can, can I draw something else? But it's like, no, you need to practice. You need to warm up. So I would love for you to like insta over some of your warm ups. Woo! Show them to me. Show me that it's happening. It's so exciting. By the way, have you moved your shoulders today? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Move your shoulders, stretch left, stretch right, left, right. Okay, curvy, 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 curvy. You guys are like, damn, she's still doing this? Look. I've been doing art for a while. I still have a lot to learn. I'm warming up. I don't wanna mess up in front of you. Okay, I should talk about the drawing. Dark to light. You know, right there, you know what I'm doing right there? I'm adding more hatching on top of a cylinder. There's no such thing as too much hatching. 
Like it's, it's all about layering. Now I think some art teachers would say, yes, there is such a thing, but I don't know. Like is, I, I think you should approach the page without fear. So what thing am I writing? Ovals, eggs? Oh, I'm making little notes about what I did. You could do that or not. Love drawing with pen. Helps you to define edges, really show a hard boundary at the edge of a form. Add the pen right on top. And this, my friends, this is a contour drawing. You wanna draw the inside of an object. So often a misconception is we just draw the outside. But that's, that's only the beginning, folks. You have to draw the inside, like the lines that go across. And that's why I love drawing this UE boom, because you could see la lineas going across. See, lines going across. Lines going across. I mean, it's just great. UE boom, great thing to draw. And you see, I'm drawing a cylinder, you know? And this thing, this is a cylinder. I mean, it's a perfect warm up for doing that. And you could go ahead, you could add marker and hatching, but look, I am still sticking with the pencil. There's so much learning that you could do with this beautiful piece. You have darker line weight in the front where there's a shadow, you're gonna press down heavier. And where there's a light, you're gonna go light lineas, light lineas. And it's all about dark to light, dark to light. Ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. Dark to light, dark to light dark you guys think i'm crazy but like you start saying it my students start mumbling it to themselves they're like dark to light light to dark and then all of a sudden you see different line weight it's a beautiful thing look i'm practicing doing swirls because i was inspired by our line exercise that we did i mean the lines could go in any direction really it's like the coolest thing ever so after this video of the ue boom because this is like the simplest cylinder I could find in my life. We're gonna think make things a little bit fancier by drawing something that's more of a sphere where it gets like smaller and then it gets bigger. So stay tuned for that. That should be so exciting. So like keep up with the different sketch stretches. I'm still warming up. You're like, oh, yes. Yes, It you need to work. It's like working out, guys. It's like going for a run. It's like you, you use it or you lose it. You got to use, you get whoop, dark to light. And I mean, I just love it. Look, I'm getting better. That almost looks like an orange right there. Dark to light, dark to light. And it makes it look 3D. You could draw fruit this way. Draw me a fruit. Make this art teacher happy. You could draw an apple. I love it if you drew an apple. Draw me an apple. Do anything. Cause like we sit, we sit and we stare at our phones. I don't think you should draw your phone. This happens every year. Kids are like, oh, I'll just draw my phone. And I'm like, no, no, that is the worst thing you could do. Don't draw your phone. Are you kidding? Cause then the Snapchat notification comes up and bleep, bleep. I'm thinking about my um, coach who always tells me stop talking and just let them work. So I'm gonna be silent for a second. Look at all those forms I drew. Look, I couldn't do it. I mean, that's cool, right? Okay, so I'm all warmed up. Look at the messy pages in my journal. Love it. Okay, so here we are. FYI for me, I'm at 1104, 1105, 1106, 1107, 8. Sorry, note to editor self. Um, got my sharp pencils. How's everyone doing? Are you still with me? Can you give me a thumbs up in the chat if you're still with me? Can you give me a like, give me a subscribe. I don't know. I joke with my students. I'm like, look guys, I'm a YouTuber now. Cause that's the only way you can reach students during distance learning. It feels like to me, if you're on YouTube though, watch, I, I mean, I got a whole five views on one of my videos. Mm -hmm. 150 students and five views. Yeah. I'm trying to be funny. Okay. Everyone draw a cylinder. Just do that. Okay, you can pause your video and just post that. You get some points. That way you're not overwhelmed, you know? You're like, okay, well, I did something. Now we're gonna make it fancy. I'm drawing this. I can't remember which way it was. I'm trying to remember. But you got this thing coming down, which makes it a little harder. 
So I think I'm drawing this thing right now, this little curve. And look at me, I am so like nervous about drawing in front of you guys that I had to go back and I had to warm up. I couldn't, so I had to stop. So, oh, you know, draw on the back of your pages. Post your warm ups, y'all. Okay, coming in with new confidence and some hatching and long strokes, long confident lines because I did all those warm ups to draw this on the way down. And then look, I am covering this thing with ellipses. You see how I don't always touch the page? You see that? Sometimes you pick up your pencil. Lines can be broken. We learned that in the line warm up, activating prior knowledge. Oh my gosh, I just got a text. I don't care. I'm with you guys. Okay, so see how the edges are darker because I'm slowly defining edges. Hard boundary. This is the boundary at the edge. These are the soft boundaries because it's slowly changing. Hard boundary, this is the edge. Okay, adding in a lot of hatching, hatching. Why is my hatching going this way? Because of the ellipses. I already did a bunch of light ellipses around. You can't see, it's really light and I got that annoying light coming in, the sun's coming in. But I drew a bunch of ellipses, just like the warm up, around the cylinder. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm starting to darkening my edges. I'm getting a little more confident with my form. If you feel like it's not right or you're going too extra, guess what? You could pick up an eraser and you could erase it. But don't erase so much that it's like, no, no. Trust yourself. Okay, guys, here we go. Try and, time to bring in some color. I wanna thank everyone on Donors Choose for giving these markers. Fab, all my students have these. These are dual tip markers. This is a set of 40. You could get these on Amazon. They're not subscribing or sponsoring or whatever. I'm just explaining the supplies that the students should have. Yeah, and uh, I'm using, I think I'm using like 67 or something. Look at this, they sent me two 67s. What's up with that? Why'd you guys send me two six? Amazon. Uh, so yeah, I'm dancing, or of course I'm using this marker because I have two of them. Is there really two? That is weird. Okay, so notice how I'm moving around the page with my double 67s. You can do hatching and cross hatching with your markers. Okay, students have been just coloring in like their crayons. No, 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 you draw all over the place with these. I mean, come on. Hatch and cross hatch with these markers. You go up and down different directions. So I'm slowly, why am I starting with that light? Because I'm working in a light value. And look at me, I'm going crazy. I'm using some like green pen. Yeah, Max, come up here. I have a two year old. It makes life interesting. Shirley, does anyone out there have a two year old? Or a brother or sister that's two? I mean, it's hard to get stuff done when you have a two year old. So I'm telling everyone out there, if you have kids or brothers and sisters that are little, make some time for yourself and hide. But at the same time, you know, take care of them because family is more important and then being creative and happy. Be creative, it's time for you. Okay, I'm taking the brown, whoa. I am using an opposite color. I'm using a warm brown. It is the opposite of blue. Why do we use opposites? To create a hard boundary. So take the time always to draw in your background. Draw in the background. Draw in the background, guys. Why would you do that? Because I will tell you why you should draw in the background because that helps us understand the edge of the form, okay? So you gotta draw in the background so we understand when this form ends and oh, listen to the sound of that. That's the sound of a dry marker. Hopefully your markers aren't dry, but it's good. I've been using them. You should use your art supplies. So go ahead, put in some and really take the time I've been telling my students, like I've been telling America, America, are you listening? Like really clean up the edges on the outside. 
Okay, now I'm coming in with a gray. I love grays. It's a great way to bring down the value. Gray is a great way to bring down the value. Gray is a great way to bring, I brought in an eraser there. Yeah, so I'm starting to add some of these shadows on the top with a light gray. Cause I'm seeing little shot. Can you see that? You see, you see that shadow? You see students? Hatch, 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 hatch. I'm using a light tone. So what happened? I have my latest part. That's my form. I'm making my background dark. I'm making my background dark. Okay, coloring it in. And um, I'm leaving my form white and I'm slowly working in darker values. Now, why all the yellow? It was a personal creative choice because there is a lot of light going on the table. And you know, sometimes you need to shroud the form with bright colors around the outside. So you can make creative choices. It doesn't need to look exact during this unit. And I got the yellow letter, so I thought that would be good. That was like a like subconscious choice. Oh my goodness. So here I come in with my dark value. Am I using black? Am I that crazy? No, I'm using a dark gray. Okay, I think I got intimidated, but I wanted to start to put in shadow. You can layer these markers on top of each other to make them darker. Like you could do several strokes. So notice how I am going back and forth between colors. Yes, that is something that you should do. Okay, so yeah, check it out. Um, hatching to the cross hatching. Look, at, I am like switching up. Oh, okay. I'm using the pencil. This is a darker value pencil to go ahead and put this in. Now, don't let the details of an object like stress you out. Like, oh my gosh, I can't draw this. It doesn't look right. But notice how, like if it's tilted this way, cause I'm looking at it up, the plus sign is curvy. So letters are gonna look curvy or wonky if you're based on your perspective. Remember last when we did the cityscape in the fall? So that's why the plus is like curvy. And it's an ellipses, hello, ellipses. It's a curvy line. And all of it, it all follows that, right? This is a big old curvy line around, it's like amazing. Drawing this thing, this is a great assignment. You could, you have so many things in your house that are cylinders. And I just really, and why do I push cylinders? Because humans, we're cylinders. Soon you'll be able to draw human beings because this arm is a big old cylinder. My head, big old sphere, big old coffee cup is my head. Fill me up. Okay, guys, so you can see I'm working in color. Keep working at your drawing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop working at your drawing. Let me see some ellipses. Okay, I'm defining the edges. Oh my gosh, I'm starting to get sleepy, guys. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep working. We'll break in a little bit. I may break earlier because my kids might start screaming, but I'll come back to it. We get interrupted a lot when we're artists. So you gotta like, how do I not get interrupted? Okay, I'm working in some lighter values. Lighter values. So that's a light green. Check out my video on value. Kiddos, if you haven't done my value scale video, check it out because I'm seeing in your drawings that you guys aren't doing like lights. Lights and darks, like you gotta think about that. And if you don't know what I mean, come to office hours and talk to me. So I'm putting in some darker values. Now I'm really, I'm darkening this up. So notice how I did light green on the top because the light is hitting, but on the side, like this was facing away. So this was actually in shadow. So when I did this, like it was a it was a darker color. Lighter value on top, darker value on the side. So color changes based on the light. That's why we have so many colors. Color has value. That's what my color theory taught me in college. Oh, I love that class, color theory. Stipples! What are stipples? Dot, 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 dot. Stipples are, markers are great for stippling. Stippling is a kind of shading technique we've been talking about in class. It's when you just do a bunch of dots. Okay, and then I took a break from my stipples because I get impatient with stipples. And now I'm shading the top. 
of this. See, I add I light, so lightly a soft boundary of pencil and I put a little gray marker. But we don't want to go extra, right? Gently. Okay, guys. So, um, hi. I switched days. But yeah, we're adding a little bit of gray marker on the top and on the side. Hope everyone's doing well and still drawing. Ooh, gray marker. Down the side. Shading down at the bottom. There's a dark shadow down here. Notice the big swooping strokes. You gotta be comfortable with doing big swooping strokes like that. Hatching. Scribbling is a form of drawing, believe it or not. Like scribbles and have fun. And yeah, this marker is dead, but don't worry, I can layer more on top. Art's about layers. Taking a break, taking a sip of the coffee, adding the stipples. Dot, 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 And then some stipples down at the bottom. Stipples take time. I don't know about that little dark marker I just made on the top. Um, now I'm defining the edges at the side here. Uh, we see we get a little shadow here at the side here. All of a sudden the value gets darker based on the light. The light was coming from the back. So this little part is casting a shadow. So notice how you could find so much beauty in such a simple cylinder, such a simple 3D form. So bringing blue down, blue down, all the way down, all the way down. Now I have a nice, dark, hard boundary all the way down. Beautiful. Other edge, other edge, hatch, hatch, cross hatch. And yeah, I'm slowly bringing down the values and that is, that's okay. Um, kind of shading in the top, making some darker values. And I'm going everywhere with, it looks like a, dark green marker, right? So I'm really using that dark green. That dark green has a lot of value, really defined. So this is a hard boundary inside of the form because it's a different kind of surface. It's a different texture. It gets smooth, so I'm adding some hatching. Again, notice because it's curved, curved. I'm getting kind of that cylinder effect, really smoothing out the edge right here. Yeah, I yeah, guys, Max, my son has joined us this during this recording session and he's here too. And I'm really slowly darkening it and wow, that is dark. Notice how I went over the plus and the minus. That's okay. Because you can add those details rather than coloring all around this plus and this minus, you can add those details later. So take a break, add hatching. Hatching's really valuable if you got a texture like this. Dot, 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 a lot. Taking a break. Okay, dark, defining the edges, 25, 25. And it looks like I have taken a very dark, warm gray, and I'm taking the time to really harden that boundary at the edge of the piece which is a great choice because if you darken the background, look at that, it's gonna make your object more 3D. And my light is actually coming in from the left side. So the background was dark when I drew this. It was dark, so take the time, take a break, make your form, whatever cylinder you're drawing, make it uh, 3D, or sorry, <laughs> make it be the lightest thing. And I'm drawing, oh, the table. So that technically is kind of, you can think of that as the horizon line. I'm drawing the edge of the table and making sure there's a line straight through on the table. Uh-huh, adding some shading in the background. Really taking the time to carefully go to the edge Going back in. And really, you don't add a lot of detail in the background. You wanna keep it nice and smooth, um, just so you know. 
because if something is rough and has a lot of shading, it's gonna feel closer in space. So you wanna give all your stipples to your form. Background, you don't wanna give a lot of shading to. You want the background to disappear in the background. That's called atmospheric perspective. Shading the background, making it nice and smooth. Fabuloso. Adding in the shadow. I love adding in the shadow. So you can see my light's coming from the back and the left. Whenever you approach, whenever you approach a form, you should make sure that you know where the light is coming from. Ask yourself, where is the lightest part on the form? Where is the light hitting? That'll be your lightest value. And then where's the shadow? The shadow will usually be on the opposite side. You feel me? Okay, I'm slowly down, bringing down the value, right? So I have my darkest, which is my like black background, my shadow. I haven't used black yet. Black is kind of like a final, final touch thing, right? You don't use black till the end. So your dark grays are your friend. Um, and then I have my lightest area, which is on the form itself because I want it to pop out. And then I'm starting to work in mid-tones right now so the dark and the light values can meet in the middle. So I'm painting the side. And see, you could see hundreds of different blues in here. We don't have hundreds of different blue markers, right? That is the complicated thing. Defining the edge of this little tab right here that sticks out. Taking my time to do that. And I feel like it's starting to look like the form. It's starting to look like this thing on my jigger. Whew. Okay, wow, that's a dark blue. Whew. Swoop down, swoop down. What a bold choice. But guess what? It was that dark. It's just you don't want to start going that dark at first. And notice, wow, notice how the line is swooping and connected. That's just so interesting to me. And then obviously... The line turns up at the bottom because it's in the shape of an ellipsis. It's a curved form. Okay, adding a little bit of the stippling on the left side. Fabulous, I'm Julia Child. Just kidding, I'm an art teacher. I'm Miss Copera Child, Rachel Child. What, Copera Child? Okay, I want, I'm showing you what color, 59. So if you have the hoo hoo markers 59, if not some kind of light green, whatever light values. So the light is hitting on the top. So you are going to pick a version of the color, but it's light, as light as you can. And if you need to bring it dark, you will lay with, layer with grays. So you could think of the beginning of this work as kind of like an underpainting, which is kind of like an interesting concept. So I'm adding in some hatching. Cross hatching, going down, circling up, maintaining this curvy top. Why are we drawing a UE boom? Because um, I brought this with me across the country and it brings me joy. It makes me happy. It makes me feel like I could control the environment if I could play music wherever I go. Um, songs are important to all of us. And in this video series, we're like taking 3D objects that are important to us like this coffee cup, this, you pick your 3D objects. I would pick something that's round or a cylinder. Don't pick your iPhone because it's flat. And kind of draw it because the assignment is like, okay, can you use a full range of value to make this look 3D? I challenge everyone to do this and start easy. Like a cylinder is great. Yes, yes. Yes, Max. So look at that bright green that I'm adding at the bottom. I guess I saw some bright green light on the table. I mean, I think that's kind of cool. It's like this bold, risky, like reflective light going in the other way. Okay, so I'm bringing down the value. Remember, art's about layering. I'm bringing down the label of the, the, the value of the table, right? I'm bringing down the value of the table. So like, just so interesting. I know. So like, we are going to add vertical lines all the way down, trying to get this video out for my students and the world. And yeah, you know, you can always stop warm up with the blue, warm up with the blue. 
trying to make my baby laugh. Okay, that is a, that's 63 FYI, right? So whatever form you're drawing, focus, whatever form you're drawing, make sure you're using different values of that color. So be like, okay, I'm drawing my coffee cup. It's kind of like a blue green. Pick out all the blue greens and like the marker sort that we've been doing, sort your color by value and organize your space so you know, like I can reach for my mid-tone marker. Okay, again, the key, circle the top, circle the bottom. Your lines are going to be envelope circling, etching the dots in the lighter value. What, baby? Stipple, stipple, circle. Stipple, stipple, circle. Stipple, stipple, circle, making the two-year-old laugh. Dot, 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 dot. Yeah, there's some reflective light on the other side. That's when the light comes around, hits the opposite side. So notice how I'm leaving some white spaces. Always leave some white in the form you're drawing, right? Because that light, that's beautiful. That's what, and then I'm adding the dots on the other side with the thin layer of the marker, the thin tip. Stipples are everything, guys. Stipples and hatching and cross hatching. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you check out my, my value, my line video. It's good stuff. Like review stippling, review hatching, cross hatching. Okay, I'm darkening the bottom. Why? Because it's a darker value. Darkening the bottom, right? It's a shadow, and I'm really hardening this boundary down at the bottom. Again, so many people, they draw things that are 2D flat, that's totally cool, but I challenge you to find beauty and make something look 3D with your ellipses, ellipses. Do, 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 do. Darkening the edge, darkening the edge. Really always ask yourself, how can I help my viewer understand where the form ends and make a strong boundary? Make a choice. Oh, look at that yellow green that's reflecting up at the bottom. That's so pretty. I love my Yui Boom. It makes me so happy. Shading the bottom. You're what? You want to come see the drawing? We're adding a thin, dark layer. That is a dark gray and we're layering a dark layer. Okay, you don't care. You're gonna go potty? We're adding a dark layer down at the bottom to kind of like darken the shadow. Darkening the edge, up, up. Really defining this edge. So the viewer's like, damn, that's the end of the green. And then this texture continues. And now I'm working in those dark values. I'm starting to get to the end of this drawing. So exciting. It's so exciting when it starts to come to life and now you got the full range. I'm softening the top right there with some green. I love it. Oh, look at that, the yellow? Gosh, the yellow like reminds me of the sun on the day that I drew this. Okay, pen. I told you I felt like I was close. Guys, when you're getting close to the edge, come back in with a pen and really define the edges. Now, don't do an outline necessarily all around, but you're really taking those like little points in your object, reference points. It's like, okay, this is an important area. This is an important edge. Look, I'm zooming in because it's important and I'm helping the viewer to understand that it's the edge. Darkening the edge. Darkening the edge, darkening the edge with a pen. Do you like to draw with pens? Let me know in the chat or in the comments. Do you like to draw with pens? I love it, look, stipples. I love it, you could stipple with pen. It's a fascinating and it's an amazing thing. Stippling with the pen. So adding all these little dots, love it. Dot, 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 dot. Hatching, hatching on the top. Dot, 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 dot. Hatching on the top. Close the door up, Mommy. You want me to close the door? Okay, I'm going to go help my baby. 
I'll talk to you guys in a sec. Vertical line, vertical line, all the way 37, down. 3706, 3707. That's a note to myself. Uh, down, 37, lines, dot, dot, dot. Um, 37, oh, 12, 13, so, 14. So, yeah, like adding sh shading techniques takes time, right? Um, and then it's important to kind of like dance around the art piece with your pen or your line. I watch students and artists and they obsess on one area of the form. During this video series, you'll see me talk about how it's important to kind of like move all around the um, art piece. You wanna move all around. You wanna like do some dots, define an edge. Do some hatches, define an edge. Dance over here, add some shadows, go back down. Cause you're constantly like a chess player you're constantly zooming out and you're seeing the whole board. And I'm adding some vertical lines down. Max, are you okay? Okay, adding some vertical lines down. So lines and hatching create shadow. Like that creates shadow, that creates curves. And notice how I am going in those curved ellipses, those curved ellipses directions down at the bottom, adding some hatching, adding some line there. So the whole thing's like pretty interesting to me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I love drawing with pen. And I really recommend you could draw with any pen really. You could draw with black pen, you could draw a blue pen. A pen with kind of like a dark value. It's just really, okay, that's nice. I'm smoothing the edge at the bottom. Smoothing the edge to the right. So I think, wow guys, I brought in the black marker Everyone hearing me? I brought in the black marker. That means I feel like I'm close to the end. I brought in the black marker. So I'm really defining the edges and I'm really defining the edges with my pen. Um, and we're not gonna work, play with that, right? We're gonna go get dressed. Please, let's make a better choice. Um, really darkening the edges of the shadow. And yeah, like I'm showing some contrast with the shadow right there. Really showing the corner of the table. So what is this? This is the final things and you're really defining relationships. That's what my drawing teachers used to say. Take the time to really define relationships, make things dark. Dot, 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 not a lot. Dot, 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 dot. Smoothing vertical lines. Why so many vertical lines? Because I'm showing Kind of like that this goes down. This is going down, down, down. What are you making, Jacob? The Empire State Building. You're making the Empire State Building. Cool. I am doing a video. You have breasts? I need tape. Okay, go look for some tape. Look at this back closet. So I have some dark values. Um, okay, wow. Really making some strong decisions with that back shadow. And um, I love this marker. It looks like a blue gray because the ink is good. It's not dried out. Okay, I'm taking a light gray. No, that's green. So I'm getting a lot of reflected light from this object. I think it's like pouring over. Um, or, you know, I may be making a creative choice. Look, I took that zero marker and I'm really trying to blend everything together. Help me with the cupcake puzzle. Where's the cupcake puzzle? I'm really trying to blend everything together. Don't run away from him. Okay, back 41, 41, 41, 2, 03, 04, 05. Back to adding in the orange. So I'm using this orange because I'm kind of blending the different colors together. Orange is a mid-tone color. And um, it doesn't appear to be bright and overly saturated because I'm layering it. Okay, really defining the edges with the pen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Going da, da, da. And yeah, dancing around with the pen. So important. Taking the time to find my colors and really having swooping, swooping hatching down at the side. Cause I'm really, I don't need to go all the way up and down, but I'm really showing the edge of this form right here. Again, you could pick anything in your house to go ahead and draw. 
again, but look, it's like shaped like an ellipsis on top and then the bottom is curved too. So make sure you stop. Hey, no, and it's okay. Do that I'm, I you. thank you for the time. Just working on different videos. Filming all okay, sorts really of different stuff. The edges I'm, I'm of feeling. That. And yeah, I'm going all over. So I'm not overworking one area of the cylinder. Dotting on the top. So again, I'm dancing all around. I want to go ahead, have a defined edge here, but not too dark because the value isn't that dark. Okay, so pick something 3D to draw. Pick something 3D to draw. Okay, cleaning up that background with the black. Continuing the black from the opposite side. Now my students, draw several 3D objects and make sure you post them. Why? Because you will get better and better as you go on. You will learn lessons. Write down lessons, post a seesaw, and we will put it in the special art show. More on that in class. Here, hash, hatching, hatching. Okay, I'm really, I'm taking a mid-tone gray and I'm evening out that shadow, adding some line, adding some hatching. Hatching, 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 hatching. And really like with the pen, I'm using a pen, just having fun. And that makes the viewer feel like the table is closer in space. Because again, the more shading you have, the closer in space. I have hardly any hatching. I'm not using the pen in the background because it's far away. Dot, 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 dot. Notice how I give my break, myself breaks from stipples because I don't have patience. I'm like, oh my God, dot, 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 dot. One time I did a whole piece in stipples. That was in ninth grade. <laughs> I haven't had that much patience since. Dot, 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 dot. Even though teaching and being a mom requires utter patience, which I don't. Um, does, write in the comments, write in the chat. Does anyone have patience? Really? Okay, so I, I'm going in with what looks like a dark blue. Wow. And I'm really, you could tell I'm near the end, adding in some dark values, adding in some dark stippling. Notice you do shading techniques and all sorts of different values, colors, and it's starting to really, really pour over. It really is. It's an awesome thing. Dot, 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 dot. I love my Yui Boom. You know who recommended the Yui Boom to me? His name is Mr. Sugdid. I teach with him. He's awesome. I was like, what's the best speaker? And he told me, and he was right. Dot, 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 Okay, I'm taking a dark, dark blue purple, and I'm adding stipples on top of where the highlight is. You could see, like I kind of have a highlight right there, and you see the little dark blue dots. It doesn't need to be exact, but you're just giving the eye a sense of texture. Are you gonna give me that crudola bar? Oh, you're done? Okay, I'm ready to keep it rolling. I'm gonna feed the baby. Add some stipples, add some stipples. Here's the granola bar. Don't give the granola bar to the dog. Add some stipples. Am I still stippling? Yes. So I'm get, I'm really adding the texture. And I would I would do value before texture. I feel like texture is kind of like a last minute thing, but also like your the way the strokes, the brush strokes. That's gonna inform texture as well. Adding in some shadows, making it cool. Is the granola bar breaking? If you made it this far, it's because you didn't have patience. Is the granola bar in your bar? I am back. I am back, don't judge me. Trying to multitask, how do you do it? Well, you do the best that you can. Are you drawing? Write in the chat, give yourself a break, and then go back to that art. And then sometimes your siblings or your little siblings interrupt you, and that's okay, you go back to drawing. You eat boo, bum, bum, bum. I'm okay, adding the hatching. Up and down, baby's crying. What are you gonna do, what happened? What happened? The dog ate the granola bar. 
That's so sad. That's so sad. Silly dog. Let's give the baby another granola bar. What am I doing in the art video? Are you guys still out there, students? Yes, you could add stippling with the pen. Okay, the more layers, the better. Anyone out there want a granola bar? I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't win. Okay, guys, I found a white gel pen in my bag. Again, I'd be traveling all over the country. And I just, I'm lucky. I happen to have the white gel pen in my bag. I am going to give white out to my students if it was ordered and it, that all works out. But adding white or some kind of white highlight, like that is the magic right there. So I'm adding white highlights to show the little dots of this on here, okay? That is the best thing ever. I mean, Donors Choose one year gave um, white gel pens to my students and they loved it. Okay, so I'm actually going in with the white gel pen it's a great thing. This is a jelly roll. They're okay. Uh, <laughs> they get a little stuck sometimes, the ink. But I'm going in with the white gel pen and I'm adding hatching. It's an amazing thing. And then all of a sudden it becomes a life because you see the white up here, the eye goes here, it enters here, and then it's like, oh, it's pretty. Look at all the white little dots. The white little dots are over. It's so pretty. And I'm even adding some white in the background because, hey, I'm creating unity. Okay, there's a little light in the background. So I'm kind of breaking the rules there. You can make the rules be expressive. Squiggling the lights all over, giving the baby a granola bar. Okay, and I really put white on the edges of that. Looking good. Added some shadows. Mattress, okay. I gotta teach soon. I'm trying to get this video ready for class. Again, guys, look around your space. There are so many things that are cylinders everywhere. Look at this. Look at this salt shaker. Ellipses. You draw anything in your house that's a cylinder. Like, find it. Okay, look. Dot, 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 dot. Look at this. Look at this jar. Right? You got an ellipse here and on the bottom. I'm gonna circle right there. Check it out, draw it. I mean, I'm serious. <clears throat> okay, and I'm adding white everywhere because I'm having fun. Why not? Am I gonna, I feel like it's pretty done. I'm just kind of evening out the background a little with a mid-tone. Granola bars break. Guys, break it to your children lightly. That granola bars do break. Be gentle when you tell them. It's a tragedy. Okay, yeah, light gray, and I'm bringing down the background. <coughs> Ooh, and I'm going in, defining the hard boundaries. Again, where are my hard boundaries? Here. Sorry, I have a granola bar in my throat. Here at the edge, adding in a little highlight on this little bump. I love it when you get to final touches. Everything has a highlight. This jar, highlight, highlight, highlight. That's where your white is. Make sure you darken your background. So yeah, I challenge you to um, like this challenge of drawing things that are in your life. Again, I'm focusing on cylinders, but everything has ellipses. Look at this, look at this, check this out. Check this out. Look at this bell. Why I have a bell, I don't know. But that's an ellipse. So go ahead and like find, look around your space. Find things that are cylinders. And you know, like look around and be like, what can I draw? <clears throat> okay, I am going to hang out for a second. Nope, we're not gonna play with that. Smoothing the edges. Putting the bell back. Art videos. Art videos, why we do art videos. Dance with me, dance with me. Why aren't you in your, why haven't you got a dress? He's a uh, Taurus, so he rams into things with his head. Am I done? Mom. Yeah, this thing's done, all right. Mom. Mom. Hey, I hope you drew something. 
And see you later. See you in the next video.